Hey guys, Buildzoid here, and today we're going to be taking a look at a GTX 1080. Uh, this is Palette's uh, Gamer, Game Rock, Premium, the Gamer Rock thing, you know, the really stupidly named one. Uh, so yeah, it's that card. And it's actually a really nice PCB, it's just got a stupid name. So let's get on with this. First things first, uh, VRMs. We got Core Voltage right over here. You have Memory Voltage right over there. Down here is the PLL voltage, so that's the one volt um, that also goes to the GPU core, and basically that, that's, that's necessary for the GPU core to run. Um, and this is one of the few cards to not have this copy pasted off of the reference design, so that, that's a little bit interesting. There's also the 1.8 volt rail somewhere in this area, I'm not sure. Uh, because I don't have the card and this one doesn't have the reference uh, 1.8 volt VRM layout so I'm not sure where that is but it's gonna be somewhere here uh, either way that voltage doesn't help with overclocking anyway from what I've heard uh, so it's not like it really matters now then let's take a look at what these VRMs are actually made up of so first things first core voltage is an eight phase, so we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight inductors, as well as one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight uh, power stages. This right here is not a missing phase. This seems to be a case of this inductor being like, this is basically pallet choosing 12 volt rail to pull the power from. So this is hooked up to, I th I'm not sure, I think this might be hooked up to the PCIe slot, whereas this one is hooked up to the 6-pin probably. I'm not 100% sure on that. I have to have the card to be able to check uh, how that's actually wired, but that's basically why there's missing components right here. It's not because they're cutting costs on the manufacturing of the card. So then, uh, we have eight phases, they are real, there's no doublers anywhere on the card, and the voltage controller is a UP9511P, so that's an eight phase voltage controller that's on the back of the card. Uh, we will be taking a look at the back of the card for another reason, so yeah, real eight phase VRM. Uh, each phase is capable of doing 45 amps because these are SIC, uh, so that's SIC632s, so six, yeah, SIC632s. Uh, these are from Vichy Siliconix, which I do believe is a sub-brand of Vichy Semiconductor. Uh, so these are just, you know, uh, 45 amp power stages. They are capable of delivering, delivering 45 amps up to 125 degrees. Uh, with eight phases, that gives you a total current capability of 360 amps at 125 degrees. Uh, that is very, very nice. Very, very capable VRM especially considering that it's 125 degrees rated. Uh, you know, having eight phases also means it's gonna run about as clean as it can just due to how many phases you have. So, yeah, this is this is a very nice uh, VRM. I actually really like what Palette have done with this. Um, so, yeah, you know, you have twice the power capability necessary for a GTX 1080. So even on LN2, this VRM is still completely capable of whatever you need so actually I'm, I'm kind of starting to suspect that Palette was planning on releasing LN2 cards because of the, uh, the rest of the feature sets of this PCB that I'll cover once we get to the back so either way core voltage is a great VRM right here there's absolutely no concerns so about blowing this up so definitely a good you know good job Palette there uh, memory voltage is generated by, by this VRM right here that's controlled by this controller over there. I can't get a data sheet for that, but there's no doublers or drivers here, so I'm gonna say that this integrates two uh, MOSFET drivers into it and actually drives the two phases directly. Uh, so that's also a true uh, two-phase VRM. The MOSFETs used are 4C85Ns from On Semiconductor. These are the same MOSFETs you would find on a reference design uh, GTX 1080 for everything, if my memory serves me correctly, except the two minor rails like the PLL and the 1.8 volt. So, yeah, these are capable of 25 degrees at, uh, I mean, bleh, not 25 degrees, 100, uh, 25 amps. Oops, 
Yeah, so 25 amps each on the high side, and that is at a 25 degrees ambient temperature rating. So that temperature rating, I really don't like that one because it's a pain uh, to work with. But that's roughly equivalent to 125 degrees in most cases. It's not actually 125, but it's it's a it's a good enough rating. Uh, also, considering that the high side MOSFETs in these MOSFETs aren't running continuously, which if you watched my video about how VRMs work, uh, you know what I mean. Basically, the high side MOSFET isn't turned on all the time, so that 25 uh, amp rating is actually um, the absolute like guaranteed safe limit. So. Like, you could go way beyond 25 amps per phase and still be fine. So with two phases here, you have a, I think it, it would be, well, 50 amps if you want to be really, really safe. And the realistic limit will be somewhere around, I think, 70 amps for this one. So I'll have to check against, uh, well, I'm, I'm working on a calculator to actually get, like, exact... Uh, values for when when discrete MOSFETs fail. So uh, for now, we'll just go with a, st stick to the continuous rating of 50 amps, which is still completely overkill for feeding the GDDR5X on this card, because that memory runs on very, very little power. So um, again, memory VRM, nothing to complain about. Plenty powerful, uh, good temperature tolerances, no issues there. Extra, it has a whole extra phase, so again, it'll run cleaner, uh, than, you know, the single phase memory VRMs, though again, the memory is so low power that I really don't think that phase count should be much of a concern with that one. So yeah, so the main VRMs on this card are very, very nice. Um, now let's take a look at the, uh, you know, modding options on this card as well as the other features. So for modding options, you, you know, the most basic one for all NVIDIA cards is uh, the removing the power limit via hard mod. So there's these two shunts up here by the 8-pin and the 6-pin. This one is 2 milliohm. So this one actually has a different current, like this one has a different coefficient on it than this one. So yeah, if you, so the e well, the, pop, the common way to do this is to just put a cool laboratory liquid ultra just all over the, the shunt and that'll basically lower the electrical resistance, which will lower the, um, the current that the GPU measures going into it, so it'll think it's pulling less power than it really is, and so you essentially remove your power limit. So that's how you would remove the power limit. Uh, if you don't want to use, you know, liquid metal because you're worried about getting it somewhere and shorting something out, then you can try solder uh, shunt resistors on top of the existing shunt resistors. However, that, that'll be a bit difficult, and I'm not sure what exact values you'll have to use. Uh, I think it would be best to opt for shunt resistors that'll re re overall you'll lose like 20-25% uh, of your original resistance. So for example, this one is a 5 milliohm, so I think you would need off the top of my head a 15 milliohm, something like that. Uh, so yeah, there's a calculation that you can do for that. Um, actually, you know what? I'll do it right now. Actually, I know. No, I won't because I don't remember it off the top of my head like that. So anyway, you can, you know, use shunt resistors to short it out. Just don't try to put two, like this one's 5 milliohm. If you put another 5 milliohm on top of it, it'll cut the power draw perceived by the card by 50%. And I think you'll end up in the safety protection for the GTX 1080s. So all the new Pascal cards from NVIDIA, if you short like if you short these out too well, basically the card will go into safety mode and it will refuse to go above 139 uh, megahertz, which means the card is basically useless until you remove the, the power mods so that it starts reading the proper you know, car, uh, power consumption again. So yeah, so you have to do these two. And there's one more down here, so the same, you know, procedure applies to all of them, cool laboratory, liquid ultra, or shunts, higher value shunts on top of them. So yeah, 10 milliohm should work, um, and 15 milliohm will certainly work, if I'm not mistaken. For So this one would be 15, that one would be 15, this one I would go for a 6 milliohm, so, so a 5 milliohm should also work there. 
Um, so yeah, that, that's how you can get rid of the power limits. Now let's take a look at the back of the card and check out the rest of the really nice things that palette has done on it. Um, first of all, you do get a bile switch. Now if I just remembered where it was, that would be great. I think it might be over here. So you do have a bile switch, so that's very nice. Uh, if you're into, you know, bios modification, or you just want to flash uh, existing modified bioses, there is a extreme overclocking bios for the GTX 1080. So you can try flash that onto the card, and you know, if if for whatever reason the bios doesn't work well, you have an easy time recovering. Same goes for any other bios modifications you might want to do on the card. Uh, as of right now, I do not believe any kind of BIOS modifications are possible to the general public, though, uh, you know, GPU vendors should be able to create BIOSes with, uh, well, that's how the one existing extreme overclocking BIOS for the GTX 1080 came to be. Uh, GPU vendors can release uh, modded BIOSes, so, you know, if you, if you get your hands on those, you can try them on this card and with the bio switch you basically have no risk of seriously bricking the card because you'll always have a recovery bios now down over here we get the voltage controller and usually if you're doing volt mods you would do it by soldering onto you know the smd components all around the voltage controller or if you're really good with the soldering pen you can try solder onto one of these guys onto one of the pins directly However, uh, it looks like Palette has kindly made that completely optional. So we have Unlock OC here. I'm not sure what that does. Then we have Unlock Over Current Protection. This will remove any power, like, current protection. I do believe that's only for the VRM. It won't re remove your power limit uh, from the GPU cores side. So basically, Over Current Protection is... Um, Basically, the VRM will turn off if you put too much power through it to protect itself. So you can disable that uh, if you're so inclined. And I'm not sure how well that works. It might not even be enabled uh, because uh, Der Bauer also had a pallet card which had a similar loadout of overclocking features. And none of those, except the voltage read points, were working. So then, voltage read points. These are voltage read points. And you have, for the GPU... So that's the GPU core, VRAM, and the PLL voltage. So you can read all of those right off of these, and those should all be enabled. So these points right here, you can just stab a digital multimeter into them, and it'll give you a voltage reading. Uh, next to that, you have something labeled VR. That stands for variable resistor, and that's for volt modding. And I do believe these aren't enabled. Uh, and that's just because that was the case on the card Der Bauer had as well. So. I think he had a GTX 1060 from Pallet, and it also had all of these, you know, voltage modification points, and the the ones for actually voltage control didn't, for the actual voltage control didn't work. However, I suspect that these guys not working has something to do with this right here, and in theory, you might be able to, you know, mess around with the like hunt down with a multimeter what you need to short out here that in like basically hook these back up properly somewhere in this area so that you don't have to solder directly onto the stuff around there so yeah so you could this could still be a very nice card to do volt mods on at least you get the voltage read points which is already in my opinion really 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 useful so yeah this is you know PCB, I, I personally really like this card. It's um, it's very capable power-wise, and you get all the little voltage control features, even if they're not necessarily working or enabled. So yeah, I'd really like to take the get get try get this card just to see if I can get these all working, because uh, from what I heard, they're apparently disabled because by removing parts because reasons. I guess Nvidia didn't want want to approve another. Uh, extreme overclocking card, but if if that worked, that would make this card a really great all candidate for LN2 because you have plenty of VRM power, uh, you have dual BIOS, and you have volt modding support. I mean, what more could you ask for? That's pretty much everything you need, except for a few uh, bonus features that you might find on something like a Matrix or a Kingpin card. So yeah, this is not far off from being like fully equipped for extreme overclocking. 
So yeah, um, very, very nice card. For daily usage, it's completely overkill. There is no way you're, you know, like, there, there's a bunch of features on here that you're basically not going to be using, so, uh, if you're just using this card daily. So definitely a great option for a system that you're going to run, like, 24-7 or whatever. You're not going to stress this out. Um, so yeah, definitely a great card in terms of PCB quality. The cooler, you can go read a review from somebody else about that. Uh, thank you to Tech Power Up for the photo of the PCB. You can actually go read their review for the temperatures. And that's it for this video. So thanks for watching. Like, share, subscribe, and do consider donating to my Patreon so that, um, well, I don't want to buy an NVIDIA card, so donating to my pa Patreon will probably not help with my acquisition of one of these. But it will help with the acquisition of other things for overclocking, like LN2. <laughs> So yeah, that's that for this video, and see you guys next time.